May 17, 1954, the United States Supreme Court handed down its ruling in Brown v. Board of Education. Here's Chief Justice Earl Warren writing for the majority. We conclude that in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. Separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. It was a landmark decision, but Brown was not the only case decided that day. Five cases involving segregation in schools had arrived at the Supreme Court that year, and all five were joined together under Brown. Two of those cases originated in Delaware. This is the story of Belton versus Gebhardt and Beulah versus Gebhardt, two cases that shaped the course of history, and it's a story told in the Journey to Freedom exhibit. Until the 1960s, most public schools in Delaware were segregated by race. Schools like Mount Pleasant, Caesar Rodney, and P.S. DuPont were open only to white children. African American families had limited options and only one choice for a high school, Howard High in Wilmington. Black families in Wilmington would often host black students from Sussex County during the week, just so they could attend high school. Ethel Belton was a student at Howard. Her 10-mile bus ride to school took an hour every morning and an hour back, but she wasn't allowed to attend nearby Claymont High. Besides the shorter commute, Claymont had much to offer. Small class sizes, a spacious campus, and vocational training courses that weren't offered at Howard. And Ethel's mother was fed up. We are all Americans, and when the state sets up separate schools for certain people of a separate color, then I and others are made to feel ashamed and embarrassed. Meanwhile, in Hokessen, Sarah Beulah was fighting for her daughter's right to ride the school bus that carried white children past her house every day. She petitioned the Department of Education and the governor, but was told Delaware would not provide transportation to black and white children on the same bus. The Belton and Beulah families looked to attorney Lewis Redding for help. Redding had attended Howard High School himself before going on to Brown University and Harvard Law School, where he was the only black student in his Harvard class. After graduation, he became the first black lawyer admitted to the Delaware Bar. Redding took on both cases, citing individual members of the Board of Education in the suits. The first name among them was Francis B. Gebhardt, as the cases came to be known. Redding took the case to Chancery Court, where Chancellor Colin J. Seitz ruled that the Department of Education had not provided equal access and granted the plaintiffs immediate admission to the white schools in their communities. The ruling was a victory for the 12 students who were included in the cases, but a narrow one. Seitz's decision did not apply throughout Delaware. Both sides appealed the ruling, and the Belton and Beulah cases ultimately joined four other NAACP cases brought to the U.S. Supreme Court in Brown v. Board of Education. The High Court's ruling in Brown did not result in immediate school integration, but it gave fuel to a civil rights movement that led to the dissolution of Jim Crow laws and eventually to the end of segregated education in the United States. The fight for equity in public education continues today in Delaware, where concerned educators and legislators have formed the Redding Consortium, named in honor of attorney Lewis Redding. Thanks to a grassroots movement led by former students, the Hokessen Colored School will soon serve as a community center. At a 2020 ceremony announcing the plan, Colin Seitz Jr read an excerpt from a speech given by his father. History teaches that despite the most legitimate grievances, long-range solutions in race relations must ultimately be found in the hearts of people rather than the courts. But this is cold comfort to those experiencing injustice. Nevertheless, goodwill and the relentless striding towards racial justice in our society remain vitally important charges on all of us if our deeds are to match our words. Mm -hmm.